30 seconds to transmission. Where is he? Stand by title. He's in the building. Stand That's by. good. I need him here now. Good luck, everyone. I'm here, just savvy scat. Uh, Amanda, <laughs> you're cutting it a bit fine. Well, I had some trouble with my ride. Well, it's good to have you here. 15 well, it's good seconds. To be here, like you guys say, cheerio. Coming really. to titles when in, in 10. We're in Britain. 9. So eight, the script for seven, today. six, uh -uh. five, <laughs> four, Pardon? Two, you know, I'd like to see one. Hello and welcome to today's one edition of Uni Rap, where we're going to be exploring the special relationship us Brits have with America. To do this, we have on today's show the host of an award-winning American TV show, Freak Out, Mr. Josiah B. Scott. Hi guys, pleased to be with y'all. No one's more pleased to see you than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Got me there. Well, I do have to apologise. I mean, I had a bit of trouble on the road. I mean, you English guys are so confusing, driving on the wrong side. But it's nothing compared to what my girl Jessica went through the other day. Really? Well, let's go to Jessica and take a look at what she's been up to. So, my name is Jessica Jackson, and I have come all the way from Chicago to Bath to see the sights and meet new people. But it isn't anything like life back home in the Windy City. So, as far as first impressions go, wearing the wrong clothes and getting into the wrong side of the car doesn't show a great start to my stay in England. But wait until you hear what happened next. certainly hasn't been my day today. I didn't know English football was so different. I mean, I tried my best. I got a bath spa American football t-shirt. What more did they expect from a girl? I think I'm too humiliated to tell you the next part. Just as you thought, things couldn't get any worse. Not only have I made a fool out of myself, 
but have also insulted the American culture by showing the English we do fit the stereotype. I just Jessica? don't Jessica? Want... Yeah? You ready? Ready for what? We're going out to the pub. But I'm not old enough. You are in this country. Come on, get your coat on. Shh! And there we have Jessica Jackson. Not quite grasped the concept of the Roman bath, but something tells me she's going to be taking full advantage of being able to drink at the age of 18. You're darn right, but I think she got it spot on. I mean, as a matter of fact, after the show, I was going to go to the Roman bath, you know, <laughs> when in Rome. Moving swiftly on, we have some special guests on today's show, all the way from the Columbia College in Chicago. Let's give a big warm welcome to... Guys! Hey, how you doing? Great to be on the show. Welcome to my show. Great. Thanks for having us. Well, so, how have you found your time in Britain? Oh, we love it. This is a beautiful place to be. And then we, yeah, it's so much different than Chicago. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So what's so different about it? Um, well, uh, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I would say uh, one of the main things that's different about it is the driving. The driving is backwards. Oh, yeah. tell me about it. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> you guys are crazy. <laughs> uh. So you've seen many sights while you've been here. Yeah, we've we found ourselves. We've been drawn to the uh, the nightlife scene, the uh, you know the bars and the, and the clubs and all that, and oh. it's it's great. A lot of live yeah. music. We've we've checked out some some live performances. For it's sure. all been awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Would you say there's more over here than in America? Uh, clubs, yes. Uh, li uh, you know, live music. I'd say it's probably equal, but um, it's it's all it's all very different. <laughs> Although there is this one great music venue uh, music venue in Chicago called the House of Blues, and actually we have a package to show you. It's a uh, it's a great music venue. They feature jazz music, uh, blues music, and some of the best people in Chicago. So it's really great. So why don't we actually take a look? That's yeah. excellent. Yeah, let's yeah. go and see what America's got to offer. Chicago, one of the uh, greatest states in America, and of course, Obama land. And you know, watching that really makes me miss home. I mean, especially the breakfast. I mean, no one does pancakes like we do. Well, what about our full English? No, no pancakes. Right, so you got the pancakes on the plate, and you just smear that over slowly with the maple syrup, just let it drizzle. And then underneath that, you just put the cream, just so tantalizing. I mean, I can almost taste it. But surely that's really fattening. Fattening? Fattening. If it was so fattening, why do 80% of Americans eat it every day for their breakfast? And we're not a nation of couch potatoes. I mean, we got gold-winning 
medal athletes like Bradley Hooper endorsing pancakes, goddammit. And that's a fact. Well, now we're going to see uh, another one of my girls over in the UK. She's checking out the talent. It's Naomi, and she never starts her day without, you guessed it, pancakes. Sorry, are you lost? Maybe I am. I was on my way to paradise and I always thought it was a little further south, if you know what I mean. What? Never mind. <laughs> uh, they call me JT. And you would be? See what I did there? It'll rhyme. I'm Naomi. Classic. <laughs> anyway, have you got the time? Uh, yeah. No, babe. I mean, have you got the time to write down your number for me? <laughs> Look, I think you're really sweet, but I'm meaning so. Well, well, hang on, so... hang on, hang on. I'll come clean. <laughs> Full disclosure, okay? I'm not one for small talk, but I have a massive... I think you should leave now. Come on, just, just a quickie. Why, never the Australians were so rude. I am from Chicago. Hey, tomato, tomato. Get lost. Unbelievable. JT, my man, how you doing? Hey, what's up, home dog? Home dog? Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just went out with this American chick. She, uh, a little bit of flirtation, not gonna lie. She was into me. So you're brushing up in the old lingo then? Yeah, you know it. Hey, aren't you meant to be meeting up with an American girl today? <laughs> oh, OMG, you're so double date. I thought I told you to get lost. No, me. Michael. Threesome? You go there, Naomi. He seems to be a nice guy. Well, now we have some musical stylings all the way over from America. Oh, did you say musical stylings in America in the same sentence? Yes. Great. Well, I'm American, and I happen to have some musical stylings. Exclusively for you guys, I'm going to do a little rap. We going to check it? OK. We ready? OK. Check one. No, let me feel it first. OK. OK. I'm ready. I'm ready. OK. Let's go. My name is Joe Sy. I be hot like a fire, burning up on you fools to the day that I retire. Got so many honeys, I guess I'll have to pick which one of you ladies is going to get Let's go in the right direction. Mm, what I would do to be your boyfriend, girl I Treat you right Tell you you're beautiful You, you crazy Once again Ah, shit Long sir. hair yes, sir. And teeny wings That's me We ain't got one direction nah, We ain't me. even got two directions yeah. What? But we directionless This one right here Goes out to all the sexy ladies We are missed you We're cuter than you Nothing Blast ass Look at love Directionless Never miss when I come to Wake up, wake up Just a sip so I can I sport American Eagle Head done up so high, I'm looking like a, a flock, flock of seagulls. seagulls. Don't feed the birds or you're bound to get bit. Don't flirt with me or you're bound to get hit. Hit. Your lip will go 
split, your jaw will go splat. So many girls, I need a baseball bat to keep the distance between me and them. I know you think I'm sexy, but girl, back, back the, the up. up. I ain't love them hoes. Uh-uh. Now tell them why. We are young and hot, and you ain't, so you not. You don't know you're beautiful, but that's because you're not. We are young and hot, and you ain't, so you not. You don't know you're beautiful, but that's because you're not. We are young and hot, and you ain't, so you not. You don't know you're beautiful, but that's because you're not. You don't know you're beautiful, but that's because you ain't Saggy duties, pregnant belly, make a nigga wanna faint Once again, you smiling at the ground While I'm looking for some ass to pound Yo, you and your buck ass team You ain't deserve the game I'll run you over with a mother airplane What are you worth, a dollar? <laughs> Baby, I'ma light you on fire We ain't hot, and you ain't, so you not You don't know you're beautiful, but that's because you're not We ain't young and hot, and you ain't, so you not You don't know you're beautiful, but that's because you're not We ain't young and hot, and you ain't, so you not You don't know you're beautiful, but that's because you're not Blonde girl, no way. Black girl, no way. White girl, no way. Skinny girl, no way. Me? Not today. Cause we are young and hot, and you ain't, so you not. You don't know you're beautiful, but that's because you're not. What a team. Yeah, but they're nothing like you and me. You think? Yeah, we're the dream team. I mean, sure, they may be able to get the crowd hyped up, but you and me, we can get other things hyped up. I'm getting a message from the producer. Seems we have to move over for another show, some sort of tribute to a BBC gem called Unzipped. Do you know anything about this? No, I can't say that I do, but it has come at the opportune time because I... 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 I need a comfort break! Guys, where's the restrooms? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Unbuttoned. For our lovers of zips and Velcro, please go to another channel. We're your hosts, John and Emma. Elaine. Our guest this evening, we have the Miss Evangelina Jacob, a televangelist from the American Deep South, and Sir Roland Kingsley, an esteemed Shakespearean actor. Please welcome them both onto the show. This place looks different from the television there. Yes, yes it does. Oh, you must be Evangelina. I didn't realise Evangelina was a male name. Two seconds. What did he just call me? Evangelina. Evangelina? Who is Evangelina? Have you been sleeping with someone called Evangelina? <laughs> Ah, sorry, you must be Sir Roland Kingsley. Such a pleasure to have you on the show. However, I must ask more about your Shakespearean acting. I've heard you've played a lot of roles, including Hamlet, Macbeth, King Lear. Well, I wouldn't go as far to say as um, Macbeth or King Lear, but my role is more of the caring role, uh, you know, the carer that always cares, you know, dealing with the elderly and people like Matt over here. People like who? Sorry, um, what? Matt? Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's what I like to call him. He likes to be called Matt. He likes to pretend he is my carer, but he does not care. You see, we used to snuggle. <gasps> he used to kiss me, he used to lick me. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Sir Roland, uh, this caring method you're, you're talking about sounds very interesting. Um, tell us more about it. Well, sometimes you need to act just to um, make sure that they understand where you're coming from. I like to open my arms up to, to Matt over here, give him hugs, but sometimes he just takes it the wrong way. Oh, I take it the wrong way now, do I? Mm. I'd say I take it the right way, but what? So, Matt, you are a huge believer in God, and you preach all across America. I do not preach. The only time I get on my knees is for my care. <laughs> but that does not happen very often anymore. You see, we used to spoon at night. But now he sleeps on the other side of the bed. You see, he used to kiss my forehead goodnight. He used to suck on Okay, me. how about some questions for you both? That's a fantastic idea. We asked 100 people whether they would leave their partners for a new job. <laughs> a new job? He left me for a new job, all right. A new blowjob from another man. <laughs> Matt, you're not foreign. My name is... Paolo, and you are 
Where? My lover. That is why we came here, to sort this out once and for all. Um, ho hold on a second. Um, what do you mean next door? What's next door? Are you, are you not Jeremy Kyle? Jeremy Kyle? I'm, you didn't give me an earpiece. This is just an ear. Do I still get paid for this, right? <laughs> Always with the money! Where is Jeremy Kyle? We need to sort this out and cancel our love, because he do not touch me anymore. See what I have to deal with on a daily basis. Would you be jealous if I touched Mr. Jeremy Kyle? Jeremy Kyle? Do, do I look like Jeremy Kyle? How about if I dance for the Jeremy Please Kyle? Please go back to your seat, sir. If I touch the Jeremy Not Kyle? Not now, Matt. Oh, you like the touchy-touchy? There will be no touchy-touchy. the touchy-touchy. What if I bend over for you, Jeremy? I'm not being paid enough Spank to look at that kind of Can oh, we get a runner in here or someone, please? Oh, fantastic. A oh, clean has just come in. No problem. I do apologise for this huge misunderstanding. However, I do ask that you all remain seated. We will be back momentarily. Uh, just some technical difficulties. Thank you ever so much. Do you have any idea what you've done? Not now, Elaine. You just had a whopping strop on live TV and left me all alone to face the music. It's pathetic. Embarrassing, humiliating. Never okay, in all Okay, now, 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 now. Why don't we come on and sit over here, okay? Listen, let's calm things down a little bit. As the saying goes in the business, the show must go on. I hope someone gets fired for this. And by someone, I mean him. Oh. Yes. Okay. The producers will deal with it. We know this. Go a bit lower. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Guys, we're still here. Mm -hmm. Listen, it was all just one big misunderstanding, okay? I think it was more than a misunderstanding. <sighs> okay. Yes, yes, it was. But guess what? You had your moment to shine, okay? You are a star, okay? You're my favorite. And you're everybody else's favorite, okay? And guess what? There's little, little whispers creeping around the hallway. People are like putting notes on pigeon legs and the pigeons are flying and saying, hey, we have little notes to give you. And guess what those notes say? <laughs> you're gonna have your own show. Yeah, that's right. People are saying it. they love you and they want you to have your own show. Really? Yes, really. Can I book you in for a free uh, consultation? Sure. After the show? Yes. <sighs> what I want to know is how on earth did those Jeremy Carl guests get on my show? We'll talk about it later. On air at 30, John. It's 22 on air. Please shift yourself, otherwise I'm toast. Thank you. Listen, you really are my favorite, okay? You really are my favorite. As evidenced by everybody on the tweets. Look, at Sonia. Loved John's patty, okay? Give me more of it. More, more, XXX. Everyone loves you. Hashtag I love you. Yes. Just go. Be oh. right behind ya. So sorry to keep you all waiting. So without further ado, please welcome on stage Sir Roland Kingsley and Miss Evangelina Jacob. The real Sir Roland Kingsley and Evangelina Jacob. <laughs> so Eve, may I call you Eve? I'd much prefer if you call me by my Christian name. So Christian. <clears throat> Evangelina. Sure. Eve, you're from the Deep South. Evangelina. Is that right? Yes, I am. Uh, Evangelina, um, you um, are a strong believer of God. Um, why a televangelist? Well, I come from a fellowship church in Texas whereby I was a, um, a pastor with Ed Young. And Jesus came to me in a dream one day and said, As daughter of Christ, you've got to become a televangelist. So I took it upon myself to become a televangelist. Here I am today. I hold lots of songs of praises on the channel every hour. It's great. Everything that, everything that, everything that has that praise. 
Praise the Lord. Everything matters. Yes, I'm everything so matters. sorry. However, everything we are on a time limit. So I'm so Lord. sorry. So, um, Sir Roland, uh, you're a very well-known Shakespearean actor. Uh, I've seen you play Macbeth and Othello. Um, tell me, why Shakespeare? Well, I have a personal connection to Shakespeare. Well, many people are unaware that I am a distant relation of the man. Wait, you're actually related to Shakespeare? Indeed, which is why I have devoted my entire life to his works and delved into parts that were clearly written for me. You may not know that I am the founder of the Royal Shakespeare Company, also known as the Roland SC, in honour of my great, 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 great grandfather. Uh, well, that is extremely intriguing. However, we better get on to the questions of this evening, where you can find them at twit underscore 12 via Twitter. We asked 100 people what percentage thinks that domestic housework is the main cause of arguments in a relationship. Well, I feel strongly on this matter because my husband, like most gentlemen, has me as his personal housewife. Believes in the old-fashioned domestic system. Yeah, so I'd take my cushion covers, I'd iron them, fluff them up, make them look pretty, make sure there are no creases. What does he do? He comes in and he sits on them. Hmm. 75% is my final answer. Wow, 75%. Sir Roland, do you agree? Well, I can understand that in Macbeth, in Lady Macbeth cleaning the blood off of her hands, it would have caused a rift in the relationship. However, in the modern era, she would have used a gun, whereby Macbeth would insist she wear a glove. So I think the m number is much lower. I think 12%. Well, I can reveal that we do have a winner this evening. 92% uh, was the public's percentage. So, Miss Evangelina Jacob, congratulations. Thank you, God. You are my hope. You are my faith. You are my all in all. I really can't believe that cleaning causes that many arguments. Well, do you clean your apartment? Sweet. What, what are you doing? Thank you. Jesus Christ, you're in the middle of a live broadcast. The studio's got to be clean, boss. Get off the set. And um, that concludes our show this evening. I do hope you have enjoyed watching Unbuttoned and we'll tune in again next week where we'll have a different set of star guests. Thank you very much and, and good, good night. night. Welcome back to UniRap where the presenters are calm and professional. You damn skippy, Amelia. It's Amanda. When in Rome. We're in Britain. Potato, potato. At this point, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Pound Stop. And Pizza Heaven. But more importantly, Pound Stop. Well, why don't we go and join them all in the terrific pizza cafe, where pizza is universal. Uh, here we are. Bear! Don't you that, please. Oh, no. I wanted to sit there. No, you're here today. Ah, the uh. Uh, welcome to Dave's Caf. Have you uh, been to Dave's Cafe before? Yes, I have, but these two are newbies. Uh, what can I get you then? Meatloaf! Soccer, please. <laughs> uh, sorry, we've been up all night drinking at my stag do, you see. Uh, we're celebrating. Yep, and I was sober all night. Mm. Uh, mm. This guy's marrying our sister. Lucky son of a faggot. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I don't see the attraction. I mean, he's so scrawny. <laughs> and British. Well, uh, well, you're both so, um... So what? Mm. Chunky. Well, we've been on a diet for almost a year now. Can, yeah. I, can I get you guys anything? Yeah, let me ask you a question. You got bacon, waffles, and syrup? No. All right. Um, oh, well, what about pizzas? Uh, what's your regular size pizza? That's uh, six inches. <laughs> You're smaller than that. <laughs> How about a super size? You know, my kind of size. The largest we do is nine? Yeah, I'll just stick with a six, thanks. Nine inches? I thought we were ordering a pizza, not a chocolate bar. We don't do <laughs> chocolate, mate. Right, well, what do you do? Can I have a menu or something, please? Yeah, sure. And you are aware that's just a phone book? Look, mate, we can't all afford menus, all right? Besides, with well, look at you. It doesn't look like you can eat more than anyway. <laughs> oh, you two can talk. Tweedledum and Tweedledee over here. Right. You look like you could eat the whole bloody thing. And this guy. Right. Oh, right. Okay, well, can we just order some drinks or something? Yeah, sure, what do you want? 
Oh, um, I'll have a black coffee, please. I thought you drank tea. One yeah. black coffee. Yes, and I'll have me an Earl Grey, please. Uh, One Earl uh, Grey, uh, yep. Uh, I'll have a frappuccino with sprinkles okay. and some cream. With some sprinkles and some double cream. Is that all? Well, I no, could... Yep. That's everything. Thank you. Great. Keep right with you. Bob? Yeah, I need one black coffee, one Earl Grey, and uh, one of those fancy chinos. I oh, know, have we got any of more of those pizzas? For the last time, my name is not Bob, it's Harpinder, and we've run out of pizzas. Well, can we get some more, please? Okay, no problem. I'll hold my guy. Hurry up! Okay, no problem, Mr. Dave. So then, sport, tell us why our sister loves you so much. Oh, well, I guess it's just because I've got such a big heart, you know. Oh, something about it's got to be big, right? Yeah! <laughs> Please shut up. All right, um, there's uh, one black coffee. Thank you. Uh, one Earl Grey. And here, sir, is your fancy chino, all right? Your well, pizzas will be with you shortly. Thank you very much. Wow, this frappuccino is slim. It's like a mini size of you. Right! I've had enough of this. You've called me slim, you've called me scrawny, you've called me skinny. And I'm just sick of it. Personally, I think you're a little bit jealous. Just because you two are both fat. Well. well. Uh, hey, did, uh, somebody order a Domino's? Oh, for God's sake. Uh. Well, mine's a skinny latte. You Americans sure do have a healthy appetite. Pancakes for breakfast, pizza for dinner. But, but we don't do things in hairs like you Brits. I mean, in America, everything's huge. Ah, yeah. One thing we do have in common is our fight for justice. We're going to see our soldiers fighting side by side. I could see three of them. They have us pinned down. You go left. Right out. Oh, hang on. Wait a minute. Oh, crap. Is that a fourth? Right. What's your date of birth? What? M my date of birth? What's that got to do with the current situation? Paperwork. Gotta be done. You can't just go running out there. That's how people get hurt. Paperwork? Risk assessment. Now, on a scale of one to ten, one being mild discomfort and ten being total disintegration on an atomic scale. We do not have time for this. We need to move now. I'll just put seven. Right, number of potential hazards. Are you trying to get yourself killed, soldier? This is a war zone. I counted six. Five. Now's our chance. You go left. Just need to calculate the final number. So, seven times five equals, equals, Seth, what's seven times five? I found a weak link in their formation. We can push through it. Never mind, I've got a calculator here somewhere. Okay, Private Tim, this is it. From this moment forth, we will know, not fear. When we step out from behind this couch, we will be not men, but heroes. Forget the paperwork. Put down that calculator and charge forth with me not as my fellow soldier, but as my brother in arms. And together, we will win this war for democracy. Bureaucracy, not democracy. Ah, certified. Ooh, risk goes a bit high on this one. Insurance will not like that. Best hold back, Seth. Seth? Bloody Americans, never do the paperwork. So lads, learn the lingo. The Americans are coming. Oh my God! Wait. Well, that was bollocks. What was? Uh, today? No. About the Americans? No. No, of course. I feel sorry for them. A small army of Americans come into this foreign land. It's one guy, yeah? Not a fucking battalion of people. Their only difference is that they have nicer teeth and fitter birds. <laughs> I think George 
we should try and compensate for them. Accommodate, yeah? Accommodate. What was his name, by the way? Jamie. Uh, uh, something. Well, this is just an idea. We could go to the American Embassy. I'm really looking forward to this. Hey, nice pants, George. Pants. Yes, look, they say pants, not trousers. Nice hoodie, dick. Guys, what are we even doing here? I need to get some notes for my notebook. Abraham Lincoln! A colonial veg patch! A patch of greenery! It's a colonial wagon! An American eagle! Mount Vernon Garden! It's a quiche! I don't know what fuck this It's just a quiche. Where's Billy? I don't know. You better hurry up because I'm freezing my balls off out here. You do know we've got to go soon. Jamie's going to be at the train station. Oi! No. Who? What? No, Jamie what? would do it, I reckon. Jamie, Jamie doesn't give. George? What? I can I ask you a question? Yes. Can I get out the summer and parade with my new flag? Obviously, you can't. Bill, pavement. It's Bill, a pavement, walk. please. It's called a side Bill, walk. can we not do this? If you say it properly, right? I'll get on. Bill, get on the pavement now. <laughs> Billy, get on the damn sidewalk now. I want to get inside your colonial wagon. Lick the cheese off your cheeseburger. I want to dig up your colonial veg patch with your tomato pants. And Abraham Lincoln was my grandfather. Some guys just can't get it right, can they, Joss? No, they're not like me. They're not sophisticated. Well, you've certainly won me over. I'm seriously into American guys now. Really? Yes. Really? And on that heartwarming note, it's goodbye from us. But we're going to leave you with some music from a band who takes classic tunes and arranges them in a modern twist. It's Mr Rathbone's Talking Machine and their version of Bimir. Ah, that's, uh, that's Yiddish. Really? What does it mean? It means to... M to me. You're beautiful. So let's hit it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Bye.
my memories to shame again and again. It means you're the finest in the land. I could say Bella, Bella, all wunderbar. I just can't tell you, dear, how wonderful you are. My memories to shame. 